it's gone quiet, Frege, in the NHL, at least in the media. Is that yeah. a good thing or a bad thing right now? Um, I, oh, it's, it's, it, it, I, I have to tell you, that's not as easy a question to answer as you think it would be. Like, Tim, like, like I did have last week some people tell me um, that they were going to go off the radar because they thought the situation was too hot and this was not the time for a, a league player fight. You know, people don't want to hear that stuff right now. There's, I mean, look, the world, life is tough right now. Nobody needs to hear about uh, the league and the players fighting each other. And I know that some people declined interviews and declined to talk to me over the past few days because they didn't want to ratchet up the rhetoric or pour gasoline on the fire. And for the most part, that has stayed the same. Um, you know, as far as I know, they haven't spoken since last Thursday. They hadn't spoken as of yesterday. And I don't know. I mean, it's U.S. Thanksgiving, but I don't know if they've spoken yet today. So as, as far as I know, they haven't spoken in a week. Um, I have some theories on this. Um, I think that the players feel, never mind, I think, I know the players feel very strongly that they should play under the CBA that was just signed. I think everybody's kind of sort of looking at each other and saying, okay, who's going to make the next move and when is the next move going to come? And, you know, I, I think the players feel like they don't want to negotiate against themselves. So from what I heard, they're not too eager to make any proposals. So we're kind of in a minor stalemate figuring out where this goes from here. How long can they afford that stalemate to exist? Like, you know, basketball is coming back on the 22nd. College basketball is determined to be back. They're going to hand out the Super Bowl trophy no matter what the world looks like. Is, is Jan 1 off the table? Because... Um, you know, from my perspective, I know things are hot, but can you afford to be out of sight, out of mind for too long in, in U.S. markets? Well, Donovan, I'm a big believer in like, I'm just as a person, I try to be optimistic. I don't like pessimistic people. They're gigantic downers. I don't like having them around. And I try to like, look at life optimistically too. And so that's the way I look at this. I refuse to believe that everybody here would blow up the season. I, I, I don't believe it's going to happen. Now, do I think there are some teams that look at it and say, we'd be better off financially if we didn't play? Yes, I think there are some, depending on when the vaccine rollout happens and when fans can come back in. But I think the players want to play. I think the commissioner wants to play. I think there's owners who want to play. They're worried about the long-term damage on their franchise values if they don't play. I think they know they got to get a new U.S. TV deal done after this year. It's bad for the sport if you don't play. And as you mentioned, Donovan, everybody else is going to be playing. But you can't be the one league that doesn't play. And never mind the NBA on the 22nd. Their camps are supposed to start next week. Mm -hmm. So if the NBA is... And and one of the reasons this kicked up was the NBA signed its CBA with its players, and we knew that they were going to try to start playing on the 22nd, and people started saying, okay, well, where are we? So if the NBA's camps begin next week, and as we know right now with the number of cases exploding, who knows what's going to happen, but if they begin next week and there's still no date yet for the NHL, same questions are going to come up. You know, what's our timeline here? What are we doing here? So... I would suspect, if not this week because of Thanksgiving, the weekend or next week, they're going to kick up again. Because if the NBA does come back and the NHL is nowhere to be found, we're all going to be sitting here wondering, what on earth are we doing? Well, let's talk a little bit about, and I, I don't want to bring it down a notch, but the, the cases are exploding and you're yeah. going to try and play a season in both the NBA and the NHL where you're doing what the NFL is doing. And I don't know if you can do the next man up as much in hockey as you do in football. Like DJ and I just had a conversation about the Canadian world juniors quarantining in red deer. And yeah. I have a feeling that story is not going away, Elliot, as much as I some agree. would like it to. And if that gets reconsidered, 
can is the NHL going to have to rethink even pulling off a Canadian division right now? Well, you know, I, I think that Tim, all you can do is plan. Like, there's things you yeah. can control and there's things you can't control, right? Yeah, we can't control the spread of COVID. You know, we like to think we could, but you know, like the way it's going, it's it, it's exploding. The second wave happened exactly as was predicted. Yeah. And we're also dealing with human fatigue. And so all you can do is say, we're going to try this and we'll adapt on the fly. That's all you can do. Mm-hmm. Like you guys are both big college football fans because there's not a ton of them here in Canada. And I'm a big college football fan too. Like to me, that's the thing that I'd be scared about the most. Like every week they're canceling 15 games. Yeah. Um, like that sport has been completely tormented uh, by COVID. So all I think you can do, Tim, is make your plans and make the and warn your players to be smart and be safe and tell them that if they're not, this is what's going to happen. I mean, I don't know if this is going to get off the ground, but you can't not plan for it and you can't not try. It's just not an option. While we have you, we should circle back on some of the actual you know, league uh, issues for, for teams. And Sergachev signs with the Lightning and, and you know, yep. by my math, yep. uh, they're going to have some cap issues. I don't have the algebra credit that you're still trying <laughs> to get, but evidently you think you can get it. So help us figure this out. Is someone going to have to move? How are they going to make this work w- with the cap being flat for the foreseeable future? Yeah, they're, they're going to have to make moves. Like Donovan, in the NHL in the summer – you can go 10% over the cap. So the cap is 81.5. Uh, you can go up to, you know, 90 million in the, in the summer. And you don't have to be cap compliant until I, I think it is the, the night before the regular season starts. So, you know, they, they have time. Now, what I think, now this deal with Sergachev, it sounds like they kind of had this done almost right after they won the cup. They, they knew what the term was going to be. It was going to be three years. And the comparables that were there are Charlie McAvoy from, Bo- uh, from Boston, Zach Wierenski from Columbus. Like they kind of, so they've been sitting on this one for a while. They're going to have to move some guys out. I, I think they've had a couple of problems. Number one, they've asked some, I think they've asked guys who had no trade clauses. And I, I don't think those players are too eager to do it. They put Tyler Johnson on waivers. Nobody claimed them. I think the one guy they're looking at here who has a partial no trade, not a full one, is a guy they didn't want to move. And that was Alex Kalorn. But I I think it's possible now that he's going to get moved because they're going to have no other choice. Like Mm. they're, they're going to have to make some moves and I think they kind of know what they're going to do, but um, they, they will have to do it. There's no, there's no question about it, but they seem confident that they have a plan and I, and I would suspect unless someone has agreed to waive their no trade that we don't know about, the Lauren's going to have to be in that plan. Hmm. Who's, who's the one team Elliot that could make some noise here, whether it's shuffling pieces around or having the room and the assets to acquire some of these pieces. Well, I'm expecting Columbus to do something when this is over. Um, you know, Columbus has, they still got to sign one of their star players, Pierre-Luc Dubois, but they've also got um, uh, Gustav Nyquist is injured and had surgery. He's going to be out for a few months. Columbus has, wants to be aggressive. Um, they they want to add some scoring. They've been around Granlin and Hoffman, two guys who are probably the top two scorers who are not yet signed. And those guys are waiting to kind of pick their, make their choice when we know when we're going to play. Um, so Columbus is a team I, I, I definitely think um, could do it. But I, I think in Canada, I, I think the thing we're all waiting for is what's going to happen with Patrick Line. Like it's, it's clear Winnipeg has investigated this. It's clear that the player would like to move on. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's in terms of Canadian teams, I don't think there's a, a bigger move that could happen before the season than that one. Wow. So I'm going to ask you to put your predictor hat on. What is going to happen okay. with Patrick Liney? I, I think they're, I think it's a really hard trade to make Donovan. Um, you know, like, um, 
you know, to me, um, if I was in charge, I'd probably keep them. I'd probably say, you know, like, I think it's a really hard deal for them to make. And I just think it's a hard one to win. And I think right now, because of where we are cap wise and situation wise, um, you know, like, I don't know how many partners there are. And what I would say to him is if you come back and you're great, and he had a good year last year, I thought he was a really, I thought he, yeah. you know, the, him getting hurt in the playoffs was just such a, 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 a big blow to them. He was clearly trying to play through it. Um, I, I would just say you come up here and you continue to play great, and it's only going to help us increase the market to trade you. And I don't think the market is bad because he's a bad player. I just think the market's kind of crushed because a, how much you're going to have to pay him in a year and B what it's going to cost you to trade for him. So I would work out a deal where it says, come on back, play great. And let's work. And if it works, you'll go because we'll have more of a market. I just think right now the market's really tight for him and, and Winnipeg's not getting what they want. Elliot Friedman here on Tim and Sid. One last one before we let you go. And I, I heard you kind of agree when we were talking about the World Junior story and mm -hmm. the quarantine in Red Deer, Alberta right now, which seems like 14 days. And then for those who don't know, uh, half the team will be cut basically, or half of the players will be cut basically mm -hmm. the day they come off quarantine. Uh, I've been hearing some whispers uh, that this story might not go away. Have you been hearing some of the same things? Similar, yeah. um, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not there. It's always tougher when you're not there. Yeah. But when, when the whole team is going into quarantine, Tim, what does that say to you? Yeah. If there aren't more cases, they're legitimately concerned. There's reason that they could have more cases. Right. Uh, we'll keep our eye on it. Uh, if you hear anything, let us know for each. And we always appreciate you stopping by. All right, guys. Have a great night. Even if you went to Western. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those math be problems. Jealous man. of greatness. <laughs> yes. All right. Just write your essays and do those dead algebra. All right. Get out of here. All right. Take care. There is Elliot Friedman, a, a fellow beauty school dropout, uh, here Thanks, on Sid. Tim and Sid featuring Donovan Bennett.